Hello friends, I'm Christopher. I just got done building this beautiful bed frame and I want to show you how I did it. This is the first furniture video in our master bedroom remodeling series. I've already painted the walls, uh, taken wallpaper out of the closets, plastered them, that kind of stuff. And now we're on to furniture. Um, we've wanted to do a actual frame for quite some time. We've got a whole Pinterest board with ideas that we've been collecting. And in that process, we found a company that made a bed that we really liked, Tuma. And I used their main bed um, as, let's say, 80% inspiration for the final product here. Um, it's made out of four quarter oak and some, uh, yeah, four quarters and six quarter oak. This is a castle joint for the legs and it's pretty slick and very durable. And well, let's just dive right into the build. Hey, well, here we are at the start of another project. Let's talk about the wood. I'm building this out of oak. It's a material that I really like. Um, for my purposes, design-wise, we have oak already in this space. All of the trim around the windows is oak. Um, I built a bunch of den shelving out of oak recently and tables out of it as well. It's abundant in my area. I like to think of it as a local resource. Um, there's plenty of oaks in the north woods anyways. It's also nice. It has a good grain pattern that we like, so I went with it. Um, I have here five quarter and two by oak material, which is pretty fun. I've never actually worked with pre-milled five quarter or two by before. Um, I just eyeballed this, but the rails are going to be the five quarter material. Uh, the legs are going to be this four by four post, and then I'm going to use some of this two by for additional support, which will make sense when we draw it out. But I had fun at the store checking these out, making sure that they were, you know, nice and level, didn't have any curvature to them, or as little as possible at least. So I'm going to unwrap these, and then we're going to draw up some plans. Ta-da! My plans. Really pretty exciting. This notebook contains winners such as my den shelving, which is a highly underrated video on this channel. What else is on here? This is the kitchen helper that I built Charlotte for Christmas time. And then original arts by a toddler. Very exciting. And now here we have the start of this bed. It's really not much to look at. I'm going to begin with the four rails and four corner legs. The legs are about 13 inches tall. They're going to be made from the 4x4 four four piece. I'll cut in um, a cross notch on the top. That'll make sense when I cut it out. And then the four legs, two of them are going to be 81 inches and two of them are going to be 85. They'll go all the way to the end and they're going to have notches cut out of them. So they interlock in a nifty fashion and uh, essentially won't be going anywhere when moved. And no need for uh, screws or anything like that. It's a Japanese joinery technique I've been wanting to try since I saw it on Pinterest. And I'm going to get going. It's that first cut that's always so nerve-wracking, right? I'll come back to this to make other um, <clears throat> notes as we go along, but I want to get started with those pieces. And the rest I can kind of cut to finesse, you know, to account for any kind of, let's say, drift as the project goes on, right? Here we are at an important moment. I just marked all four rails. The two short ones are the front and back and the two long ones are the side. The uh, inside dimension here from this point, inside here, to the inside there, it's just over 76 inches and 80 inches respectively in the longer one to correspond to a king size mattress fitting in there. 
So um, what I have here is a template for a castle joint, also known as a three-way joint or a um, shiro joint. It's a neat piece of Japanese joinery. I've got the legs roughed out here, as you can see, and one piece goes in like so. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And the other piece locks in the opposite direction. And you get this really cool cross pattern. I'm choosing to make mine a little bit proud as opposed to being flush. And it is, I mean, it's solid. It's definitely gonna be weight bearing and awesome. Um, this was such an important part that I flushed out a companion video to this. I think it's maybe seven minutes long, but it goes through me actually cutting all of these castle joints here, making out the templates, and then showing that I'm actually marking the ends. So if you're actually building a bed along with this or you wanna look into this kind of thing a little bit more detailed, go ahead and check that video out. So my next steps are going to be to just cut these out with a jigsaw, um, rough fit them into here of course, and then I'm going to be adding the taper onto these legs and it's coming all together. Okay, we've hit a milestone in the project, aka uh, the legs are done. And I just wanted to take a moment to talk about them because I really like them and they feel special to me. A lot of work went into something that is so small to give it a sense of perfection. Um, tapering, for example, man, doesn't that add just a little bit of elegance, that simple taper to it? I've had that tapering jig um, since I made it a couple years ago. It's one of those things that I don't use very much, but when I need it, I'm glad I have it, right? Um, and I put a nice uh, round over over it all so that when you inevitably walk into it in the middle of the night, you just bruise your shin instead of cutting it wide open. And, uh, and of course, everything is sanded to get rid of the burn marks. The, the blade, fortunately, was nice and vertical, you know, that perfect 90 degree angle, it pays to measure it with your beveling gauge. Um, so I didn't have like a cut mark in the middle of this, you know what I'm talking about? Anyways, a lot of work goes into this. It's not overly difficult, but it is tedious. You have to be precise with the castle joints, precise with the tapering. Um, because you don't get uh, many redos, but I'm happy. This, I'm gonna go on a tangent here, but this is a great example of the cost of handmade furniture, you know? Um, the bed most similar to the one that I'm making, you can get from a company called Tuma, and it's $1,000 for a king size frame. And my materials were about, I think, 370 or so for this, so a third, 40% you know, of what it costs to just buy it. And I think that $1,000 from Tuma is before shipping. Anyways, uh, this is all to say when you do it yourself, you have the option um, to make those kind of design choices and materials choices. You can do everything from start to finish. But I have a great appreciation for the people that are making handmade furniture. Let's, let's say you really like this bed and you want one for yourself, but you don't want to make, make it. I think $1,000 is pretty reasonable given the amount of time that goes into these kind of things. 
um, you know, just hours upon hours for every leg and every rail and every slat. Um, I often underestimate the like the value of my time that goes into a project. I think, oh, you know, I've got the tools that that's all sunk cost from years ago, and uh, I'm, I'm only spending a third of the price of what I could buy it for, and I'm making it myself. And yes, that's true, and that's awesome. But there's nothing wrong with buying it if that's your situation. So, don't feel bad. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, a good purchased handmade product is also good as it is making it yourself, just for different reasons, depending on how you value your time or um, how much you value seeing your work. Does that make sense too? Like every single day that I'm in the bed, which is every single day, I'll know that I touched every piece of it and made it what it was. And that's just cool to me. Okay, tangent done. Onto the rails.
fun, right? It's fun to watch that mattress open up. And it was fun to roll out the carpet and take care of all of this. I think my daughter and dog were more excited about the plush new carpet. They could care less about the, <laughs> the carpentry work, but that's fair. That's fair. Uh, our next project is going to be a headboard for this. I, I purposefully wanted to wait to exactly get a feel for the height of the mattress and, and the height of our normal pillows when they're all decked out there so we can have a good distance of headboard. And I think I'm going to be building that out of two slabs of walnut that I've been holding on to for a while. I know it's like a mixed wood situation, but I think it's going to turn out really nice. So if you're watching this in the future after it's posted, there's probably going to be a link to that. Um, so what do you think I did right? What do you think I did wrong? Have you built a frame like this? You know, let me know in the comments below. I always get some pretty interesting comments. Um, I, I like the finish that I put on here. It should be plenty durable. It's the same kind of finishing technique that I used for the tables that I built in our den last year, and they are holding up great with a lot of traffic. Um, check out the other videos in the Master Bedroom Reno playlist. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye guys.